Angioplasty is the balloon insertion into a blood artery to enlarge it and enhance blood flow. This is a common treatment for atherosclerosis, which causes blood arteries to narrow due to plaque formation. Keep watching if you or a loved one is having an angioplasty to learn the things you should know about the procedure. Hi, this is Scope Care, the best healing space for patients and caregivers of all ages. In this video, we will discuss the transradial approach of angioplasty. If you want to be a part of Scope Care, make sure to subscribe to the channel and give a thumbs up to this video. Now, let's get started on our topic. Wrist angioplasty, also known as the radial or transradial approach, is a minimally invasive cardiology procedure that allows a doctor to access a patient's heart via the wrist. Historically, doctors have threaded a catheter into the heart via the femoral artery in the patient's groin for diagnostic and treatment of heart procedures such as catheterization, balloon angioplasty, and stenting. On the other hand, cardiologists are increasingly inserting catheters through the wrist's radial artery. At least half of all heart artery opening surgeries in the United States now begin at the wrist rather than the top of the thigh. A doctor's initial step in opening a narrowed or blocked artery in the heart is to carefully pass a slender tube catheter through a major blood vessel up to the heart. All they require is a pressure bracelet around the wrist to conceal the little incision right under the base of the thumb. Alternatively, a puncture site near the groin is linked to higher bleeding and may necessitate strong pressure for at least 10 minutes after the treatment, which can be irritating. To help control bleeding, doctors sometimes need to use a tiny stitch or plug. You must also lie flat on your back for hours afterward, which might be hard if you have hip or back stiffness, lung disease, or a heart problem. So, there are some factors you should consider. Bleeding Problems Patients who have had a heart attack are usually prescribed blood thinners to lower their chance of having another. Blood thinners, unfortunately, increase the risk of bleeding from the tiny catheter insertion points. This reduces the risk of bleeding and death, which can be as high as 5% with the femoral approach. In addition, the radial artery is substantially smaller than the femoral artery, making it easier to access and squeeze if necessary to stop bleeding. The femoral artery is also the only blood vessel that supplies blood to the leg, but the radial artery is not the only blood vessel that supplies blood to the hand. Within 30 days, the radial or transradial approach has been proven to minimize the risk of heart attack, stroke, or the need for additional intervention to narrow the artery. The possible bleeding isn't just a nuisance, it can be a serious health problem, especially for people at high risk for complications. That includes older, frail people, especially women, who take anti-clotting drugs for other heart conditions, such as atrial fibrillation. Sometimes, damage to the femoral artery causes blood to seep into the area behind the pelvis and abdomen, which, in rare cases, can be fatal. That risk, while uncommon, is significantly reduced with the radial approach. In addition, most bleeding that occurs near the wrist is easy to see and control. Size and access issues. The femoral approach has some benefits. Catheter manipulation is a little easier because it's a larger artery. In addition, the vessel serves as a direct route to the heart. However, reaching the femoral artery behind layers of fat may be difficult in extremely overweight people. Angioplasty tools can be blocked by cholesterol laden plaque bulges inside this artery and the aorta. Even in people who are overweight, the radial artery is easy to reach because it is near to the skin. Arm arteries are also less likely to acquire fatty deposits than leg arteries. While these smaller arteries are more prone to spasm or clamping, a combination of medications that help relax arteries can be used during the surgery to reduce this risk. The ulnar artery, which runs along the top of the arm, also supplies backup blood supply to the hand if necessary. Lower costs, better long-term safety. Transradial angioplasty has a reduced rate of bleeding and related problems. 
These advantages also equate to lower expenses because patients can leave the hospital sooner. This could be because excessive bleeding can lengthen a hospital stay and lead to other issues such as kidney failure. Past and present trends. Transradial angioplasty, which was first used in the Netherlands in the early 1990s, has long been the preferred method in several European countries and Japan. The changeover to the radial approach has been a little slower in the United States. Radial artery cardiac treatments, on the other hand, have become increasingly popular in the last decade. Only around 15% of angioplasties were performed through the wrist in 2015, but that number is now closer to between 50 and 60%. About two-thirds of angioplasties are performed on an emergency basis to treat a heart attack. Thus, patients rarely have a say. However, if your doctor suggests the treatment, ask if a transradial approach is possible. Because everyone's condition is different, listen to what they have to say about the best alternative for you. Hang on everyone! I hope you're enjoying this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the Scope Care channel to see more interesting stuff. Let us know if you have any further questions in the comments below. So, how long does it take to recover? Both the femoral and TRA procedures are done under local anesthetic with conscious sedation. After a femoral surgery, patients must rest flat for many hours without moving. Due to the size of the artery, excessive walking or movement might cause the insertion site to open and begin bleeding, which can soon become dangerous. The patient may need to stay overnight for monitoring, depending on the extent of the anesthesia and bleeding. To avoid difficulties with the femoral approach, we usually advise patients to take a few days off of work. It normally takes less time to recover from a TRA operation. This is because the insertion opening is smaller than the radial artery. Because of its location, it is less likely to reopen. Patients can usually return home within a few hours of the treatment, lowering their healthcare costs. Many people return to work the next day, as long as they don't have to move anything more than a few pounds. When is the femoral approach the best option? This is a question that everyone must ask themselves. Due to its size, most structural heart repairs such as valve replacements must still be done through the femoral artery. In less than 5% of patients, the femoral approach is required due to unforeseen issues with the radial artery. In some situations, doctors opt for a femoral approach from the beginning, such as if the patient has an occluded radial artery, if the radial artery was used as a conduit for bypass surgery, or if they must use large catheters. If a patient has a 100% blockage, doctors sometimes use a dual approach, inserting a catheter into both the radial and femoral arteries. The dual approach provides access to the blockage from two angles. So, there are some advantages of the transradial access you should be aware of. It includes faster recovery, easier site access on the wrist, less pain and bleeding, no restriction of movement during the procedure, fewer complications and lower risk of infections, and no blood transfusion requirement. Transradial angioplasty intervention has become increasingly performed and is the technique of choice for many interventional cardiologists. When performed by experienced operators, transradial coronary angioplasty offers improved patient comfort, decreases access site complications and bleeding, and also reduces hospital stay and costs. Now we will wrap up today's video, but before that, I have some tips to boost your heart health. Your heart is the core of your cardiovascular system and it is responsible for everything that keeps your body alive, from oxygen transfer to immune system function. The foods you eat and the amount of activity you choose to engage in can significantly affect the overall health of your heart and many other tissues that make up your circulatory system. Blood pressure is one factor of heart health that should be checked and controlled regularly. Hypertension, or high blood pressure, can be caused by your total weight, especially once you reach a body mass index score of 30 or higher. So to protect yourself, exercise for 30 to 60 minutes per day, three to five days per week. Eat a well-balanced diet rich in fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. Eat meat and dairy in limits and fast food, saturated fats, and trans fats only on rare occasions. Vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and phytochemicals are all abundant in a balanced diet. 
Also, eight glasses of water should be consumed each day. I hope you will follow this advice. This brings us to the end of today's video. I hope you found the content to be both helpful and interesting. If you enjoyed the video, please share it with your friends and leave your questions in the comments section below. By subscribing to Scope Care, you can receive more fascinating information and updates on healthy living. So please, subscribe now! Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I look forward to seeing you in the future. Keep your glow. Bye!